Well, good morning, y'all, and welcome back to the kitchen. It's going to be a sweet day for a little while in here. Uh, I'm going to make a couple of, well, probably more than a couple of batches of jam and jelly. I cleaned some stuff out of the freezer, and I had a bunch of cranberries that I had bought. They mark them down at the end of the season, so I just get them and put them in the freezer. Well, those bags of cranberries take up room. So today I'm going to be making Christmas jam. And I got the recipe from my friend Cindy Culberth, and uh, the first time I ever ate any of it, I, I loved it. So she sent me her recipe, and we're fixing to get this job done. Now the first thing I have to do, I have to put in the food processor and, and blend a little bit my strawberries and my cranberries. And I need three cups of crushed strawberries uh, and two cups of crushed cranberries. And then it's sugar and sure gel, and that's it. So I'm going to get my berries done, and then we'll get over to the stove and cook it. I'm going to go ahead and do these. I've got a six cup of them cut. I'm going to go ahead and do all of them, and then I'll measure me out uh, what I need for the recipe. a little bit chunky so I'm going to uh, leave it a little bit chunky. I'm going to just get those out and then I'm going to put in the cranberries. Okay and I just left those uh, a little bit chunky too. Okay, I've got my berries in. I'm going to give them a stir. Then I'm going to add in my... Uh, and I had a little bit extra strawberries and I went ahead and put them in here. Now I have washed my jars and sterilized them. And they're in the oven at 200 degrees, just keeping them hot until I'm ready to use them. I'm going to put my lids in a little pot of hot water to kind of simmer. And um, we'll be ready to jar this up here in a little bit. I'll bring y'all back when the action gets to going. Y'all know how I am about my hatch peppers and uh, that I have a freeze dryer. Well, I had told y'all that last year or the year before, I put up 50 pounds of uh, the smoked hatch. Well, this is one of my jars right here, and I happen to think I'll just grab a handful of them. And this is what I did. I just got me some in my hands, and I'm just crushing it in there so it'll have a little bit of a bite. Now, you can see the jalapeno or whatever you want to do if you want to add pepper to your regular jelly. That's all this is. It's just a regular cranberry jam that you'll get the recipe for, and I just added some of my hatch. You could add... Um, one or two seeded jalapenos. Normally when I do my strawberry jalapeno, I put three in it. So probably if you used jalapenos, seed and chop three would be adequate. So this is just about to get to that boil I can't stir down business. And I'll uh, add the sugar and cook it uh, when it starts boiling, cook it for two minutes. I'll be back. It's really thick and you can't tell a lot about it, but it's bubbling it's still when I'm stirring it it's popping on me so I'm going to go ahead and add my sugar, 7 cups I'll get this all mixed in and then I'll be back ok my sugar's all dissolved, I've just got to bring this back up to a boil then do the 2 minute boil and then I'll be ladling it into my little half pint jars that's just the right amount to open up and put on cream cheese or just to have a little jar at a time open. We don't eat a lot of jelly at our house. I make stuff and share it with others. But um, this would be good a good gift for the holidays. When the people start having the gatherings, and you know what? If 
COVID flares back up and we're locked down and you can't have a gathering, make a special evening for your little bunch that's there at your house. You can make any day a party day. And that makes sweet memories. With kids, if you call it a party, honey, that's right down their alley. It was when we was growing up and my kids. Everybody likes a party. Because that usually means you're going to get to have a goodie that you don't normally have. Alright stuff, boil. I got a lot to do today. I'm going to make salsa verde today soon. Y'all will be seeing that. I've got to uh, get my tomatillas on the smoker. I have a Weber grill that I'm going to use. And uh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to char everything that goes in that. I've watched several videos and uh, getting some ideas, some new ideas and adjusting my recipe and I think that's what I'm going to do. And y'all will sure be along for the ride when I'm doing it. In fact, today I'm probably going to do several things. Get a little bit ahead in case we have another storm roll in here. I'll be sitting in y'all's house with you in the storm. Okay, it's continuing to boil around even though I'm stirring it. I can't stir it down, so I'm going to set the timer for two minutes and then it'll be ready to ladle into the jars. Got my water bath canner over there coming up to a good boil and I'm going to dip off some of this foam. You know, I'm just going to let that be. Sorry. Let me get going here. And these are half pint jars and the recipe said that I would get uh, nine to ten half pints so we'll see I'm going to wipe the rims of my jars in a little bit with some vinegar water to make sure that they're real clean where I'll get a good seal on my jars These are very hot from being in the oven. Got a little of a mess on the side of that one. Okay, let me get my rings on these and the lids. are hot. I'd be hot too if I'd been sitting in a pot of oil and simmering water. I try to leave a half inch head space on jams and jellies. And that's always worked for me. Because it's water bath and it's not pressure canning. Fingertip tight. And I'm going to go ahead and get these over here in the water bath and I'll be back and when I get them all done I'll come back and show y'all what I've got. Okay, everything's in here and I've got the deflector up there. It's coming back up to a boil and they have to boil 10 minutes and then I'll take them out. Okay, the water bath has been going on for 10 minutes. So I need to get my deflector out, if I can find my lifter. I'll get my jars out. And I'm just going to let them sit over here undisturbed tomorrow. As 
see how pretty it is? I'll continue getting my jars out and I'll be back in just a minute. Y'all, I got 10 half pints and then I got a pint jar that's three-fourths full out of that uh, batch of jelly. Thank you so much for coming back and watching me make jelly again. Y'all need to remember that you can kind of adjust the recipes and add a little extra flavor of some kind if you want to. This one doesn't ever call for jalapenos or peppers. It's just Christmas jam. But because I've used them in other jellies and we like that little bitty bite, I decided to try it on the Christmas jam. And I love it. It tastes yummy. You don't have to have hatch peppers. You can do seeded jalapenos and it'll be good. Or maybe you like serrano, but I'd seed them and chop them really fine and then they'll make a wonderful treat for you. You know, Mama said I'd have made it good in the Depression because I love cornbread, and if I had to pick cornbread or biscuits, 99% of the time I'd pick cornbread. I love cornbread with butter and jelly on it, and I'm telling you, this jalapeno jelly would be great on some hot cornbread. Just a thought. Y'all come back when you see a notification that I have another video up because I'm doing a few extras lately, so you might get one other than just those three days a week. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. Don't forget, you never know when a storm's going to come back. Keep your pantries stocked. All of your necessary stuff ahead. Even if you don't have a storm, you might get laid off of your job and you'll be glad that instead of piddling that money away, you put it to good use. God bless y'all and I'll see you in a few days. Okay, I was just going to kind of get up close here if it'll show up pretty and show y'all the jam.